Okay, okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Okay, come on. Hold on, down, down, So is this the main room? Um, yeah, this is the main hall. Where uh, they are students, they kind of they learn and they uh, they do their prayers every day. And as you can see, it's a very big hall. Some students they even they sleep over here. And there's a statue of Lord Buddha over there, which was found on this place. The school is kind of existing for almost like 50 years right now. And this, uh, the children they start coming here for the last 30 years. They've been sitting here, so different batches come and they keep changing maybe in until some time. No, he just, I, I wanted to show him the, uh, you know, the prayer or something, so I, I called him again. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so what are you doing here? Hey, <laughs> hi, hi Brian. Um, <laughs> my name is Madhusudan and um, I just came from San Francisco. I was studying filmmaking. So right now I'm working on like a project, a TV series or, or like a, more like a documentary series on inspiring people. So here, this is my first project right now. I'm working with Dwarkoji as you can see right now. And um, working with him. And the idea is to make a half an hour to one hour documentary on like, like on him and then maybe just go ahead and just on other inspiring people. Awesome, and what do you hope to do with these uh, documentaries you're making? Uh, the idea is to definitely find a, uh, find an audience, so film festivals and apart from some uh, English channels and maybe Indian channels and just mm -hmm. try to see if they can accept it maybe. Cool, so and tell me a little bit about your experience here so far. Has it been what you expected? Has it been inspiring? Has um, it been... Um, it's, it's, I mean, honestly, uh, I've been here for 20 days right now and it's like, it's, it's the moment, I mean, you just have to feel it. It's just something like, it's just like how it's the land of Buddha getting his awakening, right? And you just can't express how, what he achieved at that given time. The same for me, I mean, when I came here uh, last 20 days, it has been such a beautiful experience that it's, I'm making a film on it, but I'm finding it difficult how I can express that the experience I'm going through. So, uh, I mean, it's amazing. I've been getting up at 4.30, which I've never did in my life. And uh, 4.30, taking part in the prayers and trying to do be part of the school as much as possible so I can reflect that in my film. So, um, and just spending time with Dwarkoji has been very kind enough just to give me almost like four hours every day and just we talk about spirituality and talk about about the human growth and about every, almost about everything in life. So, uh, it's, it's amazing just to understand his concept and mm. such a unique uh, concept. You know? and, and yeah, and from your perspective, what what is his concept? What is his... Um... I think it's kind of, uh, he's really following the path of, not really I would say follow the path of Gandhi, but some of the principles he's kind of uh, liking of Gandhi. Like Gandhi said, you know, um, whatever you do, we have to correlate with life. So I, I've, I think for the first time in my life, I found someone who is actively doing it. I mean, at the age of 83, imagine this guy is still kind of so pumped up and active and just doing and managing the school. And his, his life is so simplified that, I mean, he's really correlating everything which he believes in. 
and a simple living just wear you know simple uh, clothes and you know simple food and no no assets nothing like that and he just he, he naively and uh, or you can say with the firm conviction he still believe that he's still doing the right thing mm. i mean with everyone around him saying that no this this won't work i mean this kind of education won't work give him some uh, english education or some, give them some uh, other kind of education but he believes now if this is the kind of a right of education because it this won't approve them with their family mm. you know so i mean it's it's really it's it's very heartwarming to see someone's uh, like so you know conviction and just faith you know just doing what he's doing right now and i think he's really living gandhi's values and all they keep saying is that after all these years he's continuing continuing it which is very difficult to see nowadays in india uh huh so. and um can yeah let's go to your room let's see let's see your camera and see simple oh, okay. living in action <laughs> okay sure yeah okay This is the room where most so many famous people have stayed here. And as you can see, nothing fancy about this room. And um, Acharya Vinoba Bhave, he, um, his guru, or one of the guys, the last disciple, he was also staying over here. Um, Martin Luther King, he came here once. Um, like Schumacher, he also came here. Dalai Lama, he visited here. Um, like Osho, Osho Rindish, he slept here for a while. And it's still the same. So I'm staying over here. And then Awesome, yeah. So, very much. As you can see, no, no photographs, nothing of Gandhi or, or any of Gurus. And when I ask him, why don't you put any photographs of yours with the Dalai Lama, with all the legends you have made, you have met, and he kind of simply smiles and says, oh, it's, not, it's no use. I mean, that's not the point, right? Because that was not the real teaching of Gandhi was. Because he said, you know, if it's not really to follow anybody, you know, just like the idea is to follow yourself, you know. Mm. You don't really see any photographs or anything like that. Yeah, barren, barren walls. Yeah, simple bed. And uh, let's. So, what's this humble-looking? Yeah. What's this humble-looking thing? This is my baby. Check this out. This camera. <coughs> excuse me. So I want to come to uh, from from America to shoot shoot um, uh, this documentary. But like a classic example of a student, I didn't have money. So I, I desperately wanted to buy this camera. It's a very good three-chip camera, a video camera, and costs somewhere around like four to five thousand dollars. Everything. So what I did was like, you know, so I was kind of praying and I just left it for universe. I said, if it really has to happen, it will happen, you know. I said, let's see what happens. So one day, out of nowhere, in my house, I received this huge carton, this huge package. And when I open up, I get this beautiful camera with this case and everything. And with an extra mic and with, a, with extra batteries, which is somewhere around like $200 and $100 or something like that. So overall, it's somewhere around $5,000 worth. And with, with no name, nothing. And just one smile card which says, I mean, if you really want something, the whole universe conspires to help you. And that was a note from Alchemist and by Paul Coelho. And no name, who gave, don't know, and I mean... And here, like, and here you are. Yeah, I'm just shooting this, this beautiful, you know, documentary right now. I mean, it's just so heartwarming just to see that. I just, you know, all you can see is just thanks for the universe and just, you know, and you can just take a whole, okay, you know, wow, that, okay, whenever you use this camera, you try to use it for compassion hmm. or for service. So I hope with this documentary, somebody else gets inspired and just do something else, which his heart feels, you know, good for or something like that. You never know, I mean, you know, so. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to to inspire others with this this yeah. work about inspiration, yeah? So exactly, so yeah. that's, if, if any single, even one person gets inspired, I mean, I think my, my task would be done, you know, so I mean, if somebody gets something out of this uh, documentary. Hey, hey, count one right here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean you know, it's very contagious, trust me, it's very oh, contagious, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, somebody inspired me by giving that's, me this. Is isn't that part of part of the inspiring person yeah, is is con, person, yeah. contagious. It's contagious? It's contagious. It's, it's contagious. Just like smiling. that's that's a huge aspect, yeah. It's a huge aspect. Yeah. So I mean, it's amazing how you know it's kind of. Crazy. And how how is this how is this affecting your life? Like being with these people, do you as, um, aspire to inspire? Oh yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Right yeah. Now, I mean, there's no second thought on that. You know, initially for me it was a big challenge if I come from America and going to India, staying in America is a big thing. You know, suddenly you just you think like, okay, everything is rosy. You get a good job. Wait, so you grew up in so, you grew up in India? I grew up in India. What what part? Uh, Central India. Central India, yeah. And then I went to America to study filmmaking for four years. 
So when you I, when you were 20 or so? Uh, yeah. 18? At the age of 20. At 20. I just okay. came here back right now, so I'm around mm -hmm. 25 right now. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So the idea is like, so either I had a choice, either I can get a good, comfortable job, or just follow my heart and just, you know, there was a calling that there's something else, but just calling, you know. I said, I just couldn't, couldn't there was no direct answers to it. I just thought, let's just see, you know, let's just take the journey and see what happens. And then just right now here in the land of, you know, uh, seeking, I think yeah. Say, yeah. So let's see where we go from here. So I'm trying to shoot some more documentaries on some other, uh, there's a Jain nun, and I'm trying to shoot on her and then maybe a Buddhist nun. Mm -hmm. So and they're all dedicating their lives for humanity. And I think that's that's very really, really important in the 21st century right now, you know. And as Dwarkoji, I mean, you, you might have said that this is, at this point, the idea is not to find self, uh, you know, so searching for self or not finding your soul but idea is to get all the humans together and you know develop them all together so it's not like just the uh, seeking myself like seeking my knowledge now it has to go take the whole universe together and the idea Ooh, we're back okay um, right now what we see is um, this whole this, this land the idea is to uh, the kids they kind of work over here in the morning for two hours and the idea is to uh, make themselves sustained over here so they kind of they work and they're directly related with the life because when they grow up and when they go back to the villages so they can still work so there's not something unusual for them you know so that's the idea. So that's what they work over here, and there's kind of cows in the back, and they kind of work with the cows. And kind of the idea is to use literally every single thing which is produced over here. So, for example, if the cow dung is used to uh, create gas, and as you can see right here. Um, what, what do you mean by gas? What what uh, kind of gas? So for the for the cooking gas. Cooking. Oh, yeah, it's a... cooking gas. Yeah. So the, right here they put the cow dung, and uh, with water in it, and then that goes inside kind of make it soluble and then kind of get goods inside and there's a huge tank inside. So it goes underground? Underground and there's a tank inside here, over here and with that tank the gas it's, it produces gas and with that gas right over here we kind of there's a pipe inside and then again kind of pipe is through pipe is connected with the kitchen. So they, they bring a pipe out here and they yeah. connect it to here it and they here. use the gas from the dung. From the, from the dung exactly and the wastage is comes out over here and which is used for the farms as minerals. So that's talking about sustainability, yeah? Exactly, yeah. So as you can see this whole... And this, and this fertilizes yeah. the, the farms yeah, here? Yeah, fertilizes the farms. And what is, what is this right here? How does it fertilize the farms? Right now, uh, what it does is like it allows this wastage to go outside. And from here, they, they kind of they carry it also and then it kind of goes in that tank. There's another tank right there. Mm -hmm. Outside and over from there, they kind of take the minerals and just kind of spread in the farms. 40, uh, 45 more schools running like this. That Dwarko started? Yeah. Like uh, initially, there were like more than 200 schools, like because there are like so many different villages in this uh, in, the, in this state, that and every village might be around like 100 100 people or 50 people maybe, and the idea was to bring and there was a caste system in India as you get, as you know, and there was a caste called uh, Shuddle caste and called Bhuya. So he and that's the poorest people in India. So his idea was just to maybe if we can take one child from one family and just try to uh, give them education, maybe they can improve and then you know the whole family would improve. Okay. <laughs> so um, so that's why he, he took the task that he will only work for the bhuyas, for the for the lowest caste, for the schedule caste, that they can improve. So at one point there were like around 150 schools running around all over the villages and uh, every, every uh, school had almost like 50 to 100 students. But after after government stopped its uh, funding, then they had to cut it down and they brought it to like 40, uh, 40 schools right now. But uh, those schools are like, you know, you go to the village, they're not as big as this one, but there's another school which is almost like bigger than this one, which is um, no, in, in, in the village villages over there. Mm. But the other 45 schools, they are like very small and they, they kind of go to village to village and uh, teach their just students. Cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Want to check out more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the teachers over here, uh, Gordonji. This is one of the teachers over here for a long time, must be almost like for 15 years right now. Wow, what do you teach? Um, he teaches almost everything. What do you teach here? Hindi Ganit. He teaches uh, English and mathematics. Great, great. Can you tell me how many years are you here? So, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, okay. So he's going on an emergency or something. So these are cows over here, so they use these are for the cows. 
Is there is there a new calf somewhere yeah, you wanna? No, let's see. Is that a? That that calf right there. She just she was just born yesterday. She was just born yesterday, and that's her mother right there. And the teacher, he also helps in uh, helping, help, helps with the cows because he also knows about the uh, about, about, mm, like a doctor over here for the cows. And also, the teachers over here help with the farming too, with the kids in the morning around 10 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Right now they are growing potatoes over here. They just started today? They just started today, yeah. In fact they have been working for a while. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, other kinds of, what kinds of fruits and vegetables specifically? Uh, I think mostly uh, they have papaya and they have potatoes, they have some green. <laughs> Yes. See right there, the potato. <laughs> His name is uh, Madan. He has been working for a long time. And you can see all the staff, they have been here for a long time now. So that's how they are growing potatoes. And how much time is it in the Oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Might take two months, he's saying, just to uh, get the proper potatoes out of it, this farm. So this is the season, the potato season? Yeah, yeah I mean, but, 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 कभी भी उगा लो कि अभी इसी महीने उगता है इसी महीने उगता है क्या या दिस इज अ सीजन राइट नाउ ये क्रॉप रहे हैं और उसके बाद दूसरा रोपा जाता है उसको काट देते हैं बड़ा बड़ा अच्छा अच्छा तो इसको ये तो कवर जाता है उसके बाद रोपा जाता है वो उस समय पर अच्छा And then, yeah, don't cut your arm off here, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh man. Check this out. And that's food for the. Oh, that's food for the cows. Oh, got me good. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a low one. Yeah, that's a low Sorry about that, man. No, no. Are you okay? Yeah, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. It was really hard. <laughs> It's like, it's like it's fun, yeah. And the, and the kids do this, yeah. yeah? Kids do it every morning, yeah. That's great. And then this turns into food. Turns into food, which is given to the cows. Which cows are right now? I'm not here right now. We're inside. Otherwise, just get tied over here. So, so what are these? Uh, what are these beds over here for? There's a, a huge eye camp going to happen. Um, one month from now, in fact, from 16 November, and around 22,000 people will be treated free of cost. 22,000. I mean, just imagine for one whole one month. And what what exactly uh, do they do? They they ship in doctors? Or? Uh, yeah, the doctors come from Gujarat, from another state, and this kind of under, happens under this ashram, under under Dwarkaji. And what happens like around 22,000 people who have been very poor and you know they can't afford to have their treatment. So somebody, there's like a, there's a trustee board who kind of uh, finances this whole operation. And around in rupees, I would say around 30 million rupees, around, which is a lot of money over here in India, is kind of used for every year. And no, without, no, without no assistance from government, just local people inspired, you know, and just to just kind of make this change. That's so, great. Yeah, yeah so 22,000 in, in a month's time? In a month's time, yeah. Oh, that's great. And yeah. otherwise, if it, it wasn't done, I mean, all these people would have been blind all their lives. It's that bad. So what does the name of the ashram mean? Like, what is it, first of all? Uh, the na name of the ashram, what does it mean and what is the name uh, of the ashram? 
this is called samanvay ashram this is running on the ideas of mahatma gandhi and uh, the word samanvay means harmony harmony between science and spirituality science means scientific attitude to life on the basis of spirituality so we believe that the new religion of 21st century will be harmony between science and spirituality so this is working on those lines mm. having scientific attitude to life on the basis of spirituality mm. and what types of values do you teach um just about uh taking care of the land I or i told you art of living mm, art of living we believe human life has four aspects physical emotional intellectual and spiritual so we believe to develop all the four have a balanced development in the western society there is a development of uh, physical and intellectual aspect of life in india we have we only think about emotional and spiritual aspect we don't uh, we don't uh, give attention to physical and intellectual life therefore we both west and india has problems there is a development of all the four necessity of development of all the four so we are teaching here the balanced development of human it's great it's great and how many ashrams of this kind are in bodh gaya bodh gaya there no just one in, ashram in india also this is one this is one okay. uh, because this is a new idea so and it is a difficult idea because uh, today there is crisis of value old values are breaking new values will come so the tragedy is a transitional period so it is difficult and as i told you these ashrams cannot run without money and here we don't raise funds we only think that if we get money we shall work if we don't get so um what kind of help do you need from other countries do you do you need help with this or you see i told you that we are working for the for the poorest people of india and that is also through education education needs money but we don't raise money so we the give proposal to people that uh, save 1% of your income don't give us money oh, no sorry uh, give Uh, say one percent of your expenses. Don't give money from your income. Whatever you are spending, spend one percent less and give this money for the poor. This uh, this again is an idea based on Gandhi's ideas. Gandhi ji said, when you go to departmental store and you want to purchase a shirt, you bring the picture of the poorest man that you have, you have seen in life then decide to purchase or not to purchase mm-hmm. so in the same way we say save 1% of your income second uh, when you get up in the morning put half a dollar in a box and save this money for the poor people that means 15 dollars per uh, per month and from 15 dollars you can save one child food clothes medicine education etc so this will be a very good help so from half a dollar per day saving you can save one life जब सुबह जब प्रार्थना होगी ना प्रार्थना तो हम भी अपना शूटिंग कर लेंगे प्रार्थना का 
कल ही करवा देते हैं ना कोई दिक्कत नहीं हमेशा लोग हम चलते हैं हिंदी करेंगे तो हिंदी ज्यादा अच्छा रहेगा हम होंगे कामयाब और हम तो ठीक हाँ इसका हम नीचे इसका टाइटल दे देंगे विशाल ओवर का अरे बाप आपको पैसा देना है हाँ इतना कपड़ा धोख लाए अरे बाप Then maybe look at me. Imagine from half a dollar we provide food, clothes, medicine, books, and tuition. Mm -hmm. With a half dollar. From half a dollar per day. But uh, this is true that we are not giving rich life. That is, we cannot give. But that is intentionally I'm doing, not to give very rich life. Why? Why don't you give a rich life? Because uh, if we will give rich life, then we shall uproot them from their family. Mm -hmm. We don't want to uproot their family. We want to give little rich, but not so much that they can go, not go to family. And for uh, an American, it's not difficult to give half a dollar per day. Hmm. Not. Huh? Not difficult. But uh, um, I ask you a question. How much do you spend per day? You yourself. America. On yourself per day. Per day, yeah, including everything. Um. Well, school alone. School per day. It's about seventy-five dollars per class. So if I'm going to to class. No. no. Oh, you mean like how much do I spend yeah, on food? You have a flat, mm -hmm. you have a food, you have clothes, you give some money for education. How much do you spend in one month on yourself? Maybe $400. $440. $500. Yeah. So $500. So I'm asking you from $515 mm -hmm. to save one life. Is it a good proposal? Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Then one fifteen hundred dollars. If you save one uh, fifteen dollars, yeah, fifteen dollars per month, yeah, from five hundred dollars, exactly. It's a good idea. And if few people can do that together, I mean, if few people can do that together. This is all. This is all potatoes. Yeah, all all potatoes, right? Just just peel. Just peel. Okay. Okay. And you guys, so you grow all your own food? What what else do you grow? Our food and some we shall sell all. Uh huh. And so potatoes, rice. Not rice. Not rice. Potatoes, vegetable, fruits. Fruits. Oh. Because this land is good for fruits and vegetables. Hmm. That's what we put here. Not rice and fruits. Now I heard many years ago, like 50 years ago, when this started, that you the, the land was barren. On 18th April 1954. 1954. This land was a fallow land, and with these two hands I reclaimed this land mm. without money. That's beautiful. So, um, when did you have this idea, this vision for this place, when you began? As I told you, I came here on 2nd October 1954, mm. and uh, it was not my idea. It was the idea of a first disciple of Gandhiji. Mm. His name was Vinoba Bhave, and he started this ashram, and he asked me to come over here, and since October 54, I am here. Mm. So good. And how? So since that time, how many kids do you think have have, have passed through the program? How many kids must have passed right now until um, that time? I can uh, not tell you exact number. Maybe few hundred. Few hundred. Wow, that's great. And how long did the kids stay? 
how long? Yeah. Uh, it depends upon the kids, same things, because we have a program of eight years, mm. but generally we don't stay, they run away, mm. generally, General. but uh, some few stay also, mm-hmm. so this is up to them, mm. we are ready to give them as much as they want, mm. because we want to change their lifestyle. Right, and so where do you find this, what what process do you go through to find the kids and then... Now look, uh, Bihar is the poorest state in India and here we have taken the poorest people. They are living a subhuman life. So we want to take them. So first we gave them land to work. but. They did not work on the land because we found there are two problems, ignorance and poverty. And poverty and ignorance are both are interdependent. Because of poverty there is ignorance, because of ignorance they fight. So this our school is solving this problem through well, simultaneously, education through life. Education for life, education of life, education through life. Art of living, mm-hmm. how to live a right life. And so what do you teach them? Like what's their schedule we, like through the day? teach them art of living. Art of living. Then if you ask in practical terms, we say we teach them uh, language, mathematics, subjects. But then we teach them uh, dairy farming, mm. agriculture farming, mechanics, uh, sewing, such uh, things which are useful in their life. Good. And so what's the schedule during the day? Like, how, the schedule. They get up at 4 morning and half past 4 they have yoga, 5 o'clock they have prayer, up to 6.30 they have class. Then they clean the campus, then they have breakfast, then they go in the farm. After coming from the farm, they take bath, then they have lunch. After lunch, two hours rest. 2.30 to 4.30, they have again class. At 4.30, they have games, they play. At 6 o'clock, they have prayer. 7 o'clock, dinner. 8 o'clock, they sleep. Hmm. Great. And um, uh, where do you see the program going? Do you do you have any other visions, things you want to build or expand the program or just maintain and sustain what's here? You see, the Westerners, I give one example, that uh, you have snow in your country. Sometimes snow is minus 12, minus 20 degrees. Now, if you see the snow at zero degree, minus 10, minus 20, you cannot find the difference. But when you put a thermometer, you'll find the difference. So this work, I've started from minus 40, and I've not reached, it's still zero. So you cannot see the difference. But uh, I know the difference. Mm. 